Previously on Ults. Self for the future. Here. But yeah, pretty much like I play any game. Uh, I was interested in older stuff too, and while he's going through this box, I see an orbital frame. And now, pick up and read. So as you know, I recently picked this up at a, uh, a garage sale of all places. And doing a little research afterwards, I couldn't find much about its origin. But considering how the guy running the sale said he was a game developer, uh, he said he had worked on games like Aladdin on the Sega Genesis. I, I figured this probably came from a trade show event like TGS. And I, I mean, I could have said E3, but even though the, the cover here features English, there's quite a bit of Japanese in the side notes and um, the footers. So uh, yeah. Um, I figured we'd do a little pick up and read and just scan through the book <laughs> instead of my traditional you know, pick up and play. Um, because yeah, I don't, I, I don't, there's not a lot of information out there on this book. So I, I did find out that it is part of a set of three art books featuring the art of Yoji Shinkawa. The other two mainly feature art from the Metal Gear Solid series. Eh. I mean, it's not like it's not like I'm, I'm not really a fan of Metal Gear Solid. I've only played through the, uh, the PlayStation 1 game, but I am a fan of giant robots. So uh, when Zone of the Enders came out, I mean, <laughs> it, was the, it was the giant robot game I never knew that I wanted um, because it was so different from what I had come to expect uh, seeing all this media from Japan with like Gundam. I mean, take this this concept sketch here on the cover. How it's it, it expresses how the, the 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 robots in this game are fundamentally different from the Gundam series and uh, anything prior. It it strips away the 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 metal tank armor and bulky joints and leaves you with this thin frame that you believe is light enough and uh, graceful enough to, to fly from the ground to the air and and attack quick and gracefully like a uh, a, a ballerina with blades <laughs> and fighting in an air ballet it's actually something they probably should have used in their their marketing because um, you know how the the Japanese especially Kojima they like to use awkward combinations of uh, bold, ostentatious English words and uh, you know, throw them into their trailers. But uh, yeah, actually you do find a lot of similarities. Even, even, even though the design of the, the mechs are different, you do find a lot of the similarities um, between Zoe and uh, the Gundam series. So like how these are kind of mystical beings, these, these orbital frames, as they call them. An orbital frame. In the Gundam series, you always think of, or when they're mentioned, people always are, are afraid or just surprised and they think they're legendary creatures. The Gundam! So yeah, let's just get this, let's just get this read started. It, I do want to say that not only does this feature art from um, Zone of the Enders and Zone of the Enders 2, but it also features art for Final Wars, which I didn't even know uh, this guy even did any of the artwork for that uh, movie. So that'll be pretty cool to look at. So first page here, we got a nice, I think this is Anubis, just by the, the headpiece there. But um, I kind of always get these uh, confused when I look at them from profile, but it could be Jehuti. <laughs> um, this is definitely Anubis. Okay. And there's Arjet, which is piloted by... <laughs> her, her name is Ken. I don't know what that's short for, but um, yeah, the girl who picks you up in the first game, or sorry, the second game, and Zone the Enders 2. 
And even though these are concept sketches, they, you can see, I mean, you can jump from, from here directly into the game. In fact, there's like a, you can unlock a mech that looks very stripped down and um, with a lot of the, even though there is not much uh, f f framing on here that looks like it's armor, um, there is a mech that you can unlock called the Naked Jehudi, which is basically some of these colored pieces stripped off and you can kind of see this, uh, this more of this golden stuff and um, white area below that, so it's pretty neat. Uh, this is Anubis. Just amazing stuff they've got here. Ooh, yeah. A lot of the, uh, in the second game they introduced the satellite weapons that would rotate around you when you did the, uh, the, the zero shift, I think it was called. Although that's the, I think this is for the vector cannon. And actually this one, this one kind of over here fits more the traditional mech design. He's kind of bulky, but this is, these are like, kind of like, this is the generic enemies you'd fight in the game. Uh, I think they're called LEVs or LEVs, short for something, I don't know. But yeah, here's some of the Japanese. And be great if, if any one of you know Japanese and can read that and translate it. It does mention MGS4 in there, so <clears throat> maybe it says something from uh, that Shinkawa learned in this game that he applied toward later games. I do see um, with Zone of the Enders, when Zone of the Enders came out, um, it, it, it was bundled with a, a demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 and a lot of people seemed disappointed um, by that decision. They were really interested in, in playing Metal Gear Solid 2 but I couldn't, I couldn't understand why anybody would be disappointed with the... It was the first time you could you could really pilot a, a, a quick and, and maneuverable mech. It was it was a giant robot. Now come on, I mean, how could anybody be disappointed with that? I mean, the first game is definitely um, flawed compared to the second one. It feels like a lot, it feels very stiff, um, considering how I just said it's light and maneuverable, your mech, but I'm just talking about, I guess, uh, yeah, it feels stiff, considering in the second game they added a lot of a lot of techniques and movements that would increase the the um, the flow from one action to the other, like being able to to fly past an enemy and grab them and throw them using the momentum, throw it into an, another enemy, and being able to target multiple enemies. So this is art from Final Wars, and as you can as you can see, there's a ton of Japanese text here on the footer. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've only seen this movie once and I recommend, I recommend anybody, um, who's into giant, I mean, if you, if you're a fan of Godzilla, you've probably seen this movie, but he, he fights every single monster from the Godzilla movie spanning 50 years, I think. Um, it's been a while since that movie came out, but. <laughs> It's still got the, the, the kind of campy cheesiness, but it's it's definitely worth uh, a watch if you're a fan of, of Godzilla films. So, I mean, who wouldn't? You're a giant, giant lizard. These are the aliens. I, I think in this movie, they're the same aliens that uh, created the uh, Ghidorah, right? Wasn't Ghidorah created by the aliens?
This guy kind of looks like he's from Metal Gear Solid. Uh, that later game, The Revengeance, which I still have to get. That one looks like it would be up my alley, because I'm more into the God of War beat em up kind of game. Rather than sneaking around and being all stealthy. Here we got some sculptures. This guy looks like a dog. I'm not sure where these are from. Maybe these are just his musings, you know, just sort of his experimentations. Look at this, you can see an arm coming out of this robot dog. Like the man is like there's a man inside hunched over. This is definitely Metal Gear Solid, and this is definitely, uh, Revengeance. This man has a big R on the base there. I love, I love how these, they're not webbed, like these wings on the, on the back of Jehuti, they're not connected. They're they're like individual, almost like skeleton bones sticking out, and the the uh, energy that the robot generates to thrust the frame forward actually fills in those gaps and makes it look almost angelic. <laughs> it's really beautiful. And these, these guys over here, I don't even know where they're from. Again, maybe they're just sort of musings. Now these are the Metal Gears, which I'm surprised are in here. I mean, they did have uh, Raiden, Raiden in there. But you can see, this is actually the, from the first game. This is Metal Gear Rex. You can see how they changed. I know there's a, a, a time difference between Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2, but you can see how this is more resembles like a, a, a mobile tank. And this thing, even though this one's called Ray, this is Metal Gear Rex and this is Metal Gear Ray. This is, it, to me, it, it resembles more of a, a bug. And you can see, because, because Metal Gear Solid 2 and Zone of the Enders were kind of around the same time period, you can see how like these thoughts were going through uh, Shinkawa's head, the this area, these kind of um, grilled and uh, scaly areas are, are golden. Um, you see those kinds of things underneath or between the frame pieces of Jehuti. Here you can see, um, if I skip back here, but they really resemble something I would see on a beetle. But they resemble the kind of scaling you would see underneath the wings and the armor pieces on a beetle. So maybe Metal Gear Ray, just because there's an R sound with the, th there was Metal Gear Rex, and then maybe they just wanted Metal Gear Ray. I don't know. If, I don't know if there is a third Metal Gear in um, Metal Gear Solid Three or Four. Like I said, I haven't played them. But yeah, it's usually this golden color underneath the, or between the frame pieces of the orbital frames. So, you can see how these two were really mimicking each other. Um, or just, you know, they kind of, it's, I have heard that the, uh, they, they take place in some sort of shared universe. But, you know, you kind of have to create the links between them in your own head. And in fact, if you look at the feet here of the Metal Gear Ray, even though this is kind of, this is still kind of bulky, but they come more to a point. And the, the orbital frames, they're always at a point. And when, but when you go down to the uh, surface level, if you, you're in the air and you hit the ground, you'll see like these little skis come out. They, they extend. And you, it's like you're gliding along skis, um, very very small skis. But you can see even on our jet, um, 
she has tiny pointed uh, legs as well. They come, they taper off there. So that's that's pretty sweet. I mean, this design I like as well, but I mean, you you couldn't believe that this thing could uh, gracefully fly through the air and do all sorts of uh, just thread the needle kind of maneuvers that something like this or even you know obviously Chahuti could so now this is definitely something that hasn't been made into a game I and mean, then it's like a weird uh, I could imagine this guy staying atop a tower just sniping people just combines various styles. Even the hand here looks very um, bony, like like the uh, the exoskeleton from the Terminator series. You got a weird baby robot there. <laughs> I wonder if you're gonna see any of that um, that Death Stranding game baby robots. But look at this. See, these are almost like those. Look at the heels here. Um, these like stiletto kind of heels. These are very much like uh, skis I was talking about. Although these remind me more of the pistons on the back of Robocop's heels. But uh, you can imagine these stilettos being up inside the leg or something and then extending down. Although with the uh, Jehuti they, they they extend from the, the back of the foot and then come down like that. So the foot's up here and you can still ski along the flat surface. That's pretty sweet. Well, there we go. That is the art of Yoji Shinkala. Just one of them. It says this uh, was 2011. So this would have come out in the PS3's lifespan. I think Metal Gear Solid 4 was out by then. So, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this this read through. Really, it's not. I just I if there weren't scans on the net, you know, this is just helpful. If someone wanted to see what was inside this book. If anybody does know exactly where this book came from, uh, where it was given out, or if you had to buy it, I don't see a price anywhere. But like I said, I think this is more this is more like something you'd get as a handout at a trade show event. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.